Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy and Cube, and I recently did a video on database mirroring in Fabric. I made it look like it was so simple. I didn't run into any challenges. The reality is I did run into a few things that really frustrated me, and I was like, ah. So in this video, I just want to kind of demystify some of those frustrations and actually show you what I ran into when I was setting up mirroring with Cosmos and Azure SQL. So you know what I like to do? Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So when I was configuring mirroring against Azure Cosmos, there's a couple of things I ran into. The first thing is the containers that you create must be set up for continuous backup. And so where you would go is you go onto your Cosmos DB in the Azure portal and you choose point in time restore, and then you'll see where it says backup policy. And then you can choose continuous seven days or continuous 30 days. If you don't choose that, when you go to set up mirroring, it's going to prompt you and say, you need to set this up. The area that I got when I was configuring this, they were really explicit and they really helped. The next thing that I ran into was that you needed to have your network completely open. And so you click on network and under settings and you go to public access and you can see where it says all networks. I know, I'm sure this is a work in progress and this is something that the fabric team is working on to get this where it works, you know, against, you know, those sources. But today you need to open up your network. Now, one thing when you are creating your cosmos, there's something you must do. And so if I go home and I choose create and I search for Cosmos DB, you find Azure Cosmos in the plan, you choose Azure Cosmos, you click create, you have two choices, Mongo or NoSQL. Be sure to choose a NoSQL because it only works with the NoSQL option. So a little frustrating, the documentation does say that, but you know how we are with IT people, we don't read documentation. With SQL, it was a few other things. Let me show you. So if I go over to my Azure SQL database, there's a couple of things that you need to do when it comes to configuring SQL. The first thing was you needed to enable managed identities when well, you expand security and you look for identity and you just turn it on. The great thing is in the fabric portal when you're setting up your Azure SQL database, it's going to give you that error and it's going to say, hey, the managed identity is not configured. You need to go turn this on by default. You don't have to assign a managed identity. You just need to turn it on. The next thing is networking. So with networking, you either need to specify IP addresses and you can go and check out the documentation. It tells you which ones or you can allow Azure services. And then another thing that I kind of ran into is if you go to the database, so this is the database I configured. If I go to Northwinds and if you go to the pricing tier and you have this set to the basic pricing tier, it's not going to work. You need to set it to standard and it needs to be a hundred DTUs or more. I missed that part too. Once you have all that done, it should work. Now, if you're using the Azure SQL database, it enables some things in the database and you only can replicate one at a time, right? You only can mirror that database to one workspace in Fabric. If you try to do it multiple times, I ran into some challenges. And if you delete it without stopping it, so if you go and you know, you know you've know you deleted all the mirrors and it's still telling you, hey, you're mirroring it, what do I do? Well, there's a store procedure you can run on that Azure SQL database to help you turn it off. And so if you go over into Management Studio, you can actually run this particular store procedure right here. So if I've deleted all of my mirrored databases for Northwinds, for example, and then I try to go and configure it and I get an error saying it's already being replicated. If you run this store procedure, it'll disable the mirroring and you should be able to continue down your journey of setting up the mirror. All right. What do you think? You have any questions, comments? Have you run into other frustrations or other challenges that you want to share with us? I'd love to know. You know what to do. Post them in the comments below. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.